Hi guys, welcome back to Strength for Dance and we're going to be looking at theory today and we're going to be looking at some very big and important topics. So part one is going to be about pronation and the foot. So what is pronation? What is it we should be looking for? Why is it a useful movement to have? and why we shouldn't be frightened of the movement of pronation or the concept of the foot having that rolling in uh, motion. So, one of the main basics that we always need to anchor into is this concept of tripod foot. Three points of weight bearing. Within the foot, we will be looking at under the first toe joint or first MTP, under the fifth, and in the middle of the heel. That is your tripod or triangle position. When we are looking at normal stance, pronation and supination, we want to have contact with these three points on the floor. So getting a good understanding of tripod is really important. We have three arches within the foot as well. There's an arch running on the outside, the lateral, longitudinal arch, one on the inside, the medial longitudinal arch, and we have one here as well, which is your transverse arch. That's the one that you're looking at a lot of the time when you're doing your foot doming exercise, looking for strong feet for tongue and point. The mechanics of pronation, we're looking at changes within these arches. So the arch will deform and lengthen, and then recoil back in its spring again. Looking now at the pronating foot from front on. This is the talus bone here, and when the foot pronates, we want to be able to see the talus bone rotate inwards. The motion of this talus bone rotating inwards causes a knock-on effect onto the inside of the foot. So as we bend, the talus rotates in. And I don't know if you can see, this is my heel bone or calcaneum. It has a backwards tilting view to it. This is called plantar flexion. So my calcaneum or rear foot plantar flexes. My forefoot here is going to come in the opposite direction. So it actually dorsiflexes a little bit or raises. Now this motion of that lifting and lengthening and this going backwards creates length in what's termed my medial arch. So I should see a drop in the arch, loading, pliable and elastic. So that's what we should see happening on the inside here from side on view. From the outside, as I bend, I'm going to see a very slight narrowing on this side because the opening is happening here. So my ankle rotates in. Again, the foot is going to lower and deform, but we have a slightly different view. From above, when looking at the pronating foot, again, my ankle rotates in. We can see that inside line of the foot opening and correspondingly, the outside part of my foot here is shortening. So this area on the outside here is shortening. And then it reforms again. That comes together and opens. This side lengthens. The whole time as well, it's important to note that the toes stay long. I'm not gripping the floor at all. And the toes will generally rotate as well. So you can just see here, my toenails are rotating in that direction. From side on with the model foot, there's our active medial arch in tripod. And again, my body weight comes down, the foot lengthens and reforms again. Lengthens, reforms again. From front on, 
lengthens and reforms. And the heel, we should see it tilts out and comes back up again. Tilts out and comes back up again. So if you watch my heel here, as I pronate, it tilts and then it comes back up again. Tilts and comes back up. When looking at pronation, we want to make sure we are seeing this, which is a downward spiral in all three planes of motion, and not tilting. If the foot tilts, I've lost contact with part of my tripod, so it is no longer pronation. Pronation is termed a mobile adapter. That's because when this movement happens, the foot becomes a lot more mobile and fluid. So when we deform in, we open these joints at the side and the foot becomes quite mobile. This is in contrast to supination where we are creating a more rigid foot or rigid lever. We need this mobile adapter, however, to create length within the tissues. Length in the tissues equals movement, contraction and strength. The pronation we're looking at is called type 1 pronation. So we have a bend in the ankle and we return again. From side on, we bend. As you can see here, the arch lengthens. I have deformation of the arch, drop of navicular, nice long toes, and I return again. And it's a really nice gooey motion, loading in and loading out. Now this is with a bent ankle, a bent knee, and I also have a bent hip. I can also have this position, however, with the same setup, but with a straighter ankle or a plantar flexed ankle. This is called type two pronation. Most of my weight again is in towards the inside of the foot. The foot alignment is the same. So my ankle has rotated in, the inside of my foot is long, the outside shorter, and my toes veering that way. But if I plan to flex the ankle, it looks like this. That is type two pronation. Now, for some of us dancers out there, that might look familiar. That's a little bit like a fish. So when foot. we're looking at our rise training, we want to be even, not in type two pronation. Remember, pronation is a mobile foot position. So this is not a stable position for you to be in when you're rising. You want to be in a supinated foot position, which again we'll look at in part two. So why is pronation so important? Well, it is a movement pattern that lengthens and loads all of the muscles of the lower limb and even higher up within the body as well. Our muscles respond and shorten by being lengthened. So this is how we get our power. This is how energy is transmitted throughout the system. Not only are we loading our muscles and tendons, but we're loading our entire fascial web. We're loading our skin. We're getting lots of information back into the body. If we block the foot and prevent this loading of the tissues, not only are you going to feel very hard and jerky on the floor, but you're going to lose your ability to spring back up again. Now, this is even within just a normal activity like walking. So we come into the floor, we need to lengthen and spring back up again. Then if you start looking at activities like jumping, allegro, leaps, you really need to be able to deform into the foot to harness power and energy and then let it go again. So we very much work a little bit like a catapult. If I was wanting to throw something far, I would need to pull the catapult back. Otherwise, it would just pop out the front.